Hey everybody, it's Chaka Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum! Last time, we set out from Hardhome City, had a battle against Barry. First time in a really long time, actually. Got out here into Route 209 and appreciated the amazing music, and we even had a showdown against Spiritomb here at the Hollowed Tower. This time, I am going to totally break the immersion of this great music by hopping on my bike, and we're going to be heading more to the north, off to Solaceon Town, where Barry said he was going to be heading next. Get an ether right there, that'll be good. Get some PP restored to our moves. Oh, again, can't really buy that. Ooh, uh, berries, I'm guessing cherry? No, Raz. Keep mixing up Raz and cherry. I mean, they, they are both red, but their plants look different. I don't know why I'm making that mistake so much. I'll pluck that. And I think, perhaps, there is a hidden item right here. Yes, Stardust, another selling item. Could get up that ramp with my bike, but that girl is going to battle me the second I do that, so I think I'd rather save us some time and go onto these very slow menus and use a repel. It's kind of a sad day when Sinnoh menus are faster than Sinnoh battles. Actually, no, it's not really so unusual. I think right here, yeah. I want to go like this, and then I want to shift over at the last second. Nope, didn't quite do it. I want to go now. Nope. Just watch, repel's effect is gonna- yep, there it is. Okay, at least I didn't do it on the approach. Do that. Okay, with a 3DS D-pad, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Yes, there we go. That gets me a calci- Whoa! Okay, two things. You could sell that for almost 5,000 Pokemon dollars, but I think I'd rather use that. Also, if you want these menus to scroll faster, no joke, you have to actually, like, basically draw circles on this Pokeball to rotate it faster. It's so dumb. Why can they not make the D-pad scroll that fast? Oh, it's in medicine. So I scrolled all that way for nothing. <laughs> wow. Off to a rockin' start here. This will raise the special attack stat of a Pokemon permanently. This is getting a little bit into effort values, which I think we'd be best going off, going uh, over at another time. I don't really have that many special attackers on my team. Curly has got attack for a nature, and I think you know what that means in the way of evolution, so it wouldn't make sense to use it on her, on a him. So I think I'll use it on the actual her. Let's go for Supernova. Raise that magical leaf up a little bit. Actually, I think while I'm here, yeah, I think I'm gonna give the Meadow Plate to Supernova, because that Shell Bell, that has been restoring like one HP, and even though it does technically make me a little bit tankier, I really don't think it's been all that worthwhile. Let's get down here. That was really worth all the effort, wow. Um, guess I gotta use another repel. I'm just kinda trying to eat through my regular repels at this point. I know that I could be using my supers, but I already bought these regular ones. I might as well use them up and then move on to my supers. It's not like this is a long patch of grass or anything like that. So, we go over this way. Where departed Pokemon sleep. This is the Lost Tower. So we have a bit of a dungeon ahead of us. I can go ahead and use Cut right here. Go on, Derpidius. Do your stuff. Thank you for that. Your presence is very appreciated. TM47 Steel Wing. That is a physical steel type move. I don't think we've really seen these before. I think that one is it raises attack or raises defense. Let me check this just to be absolutely sure. Okay, yeah, defense. I always get the defense of Steel Wing mixed up with the attack up of Iron Tail, and I never know which one is which off memory, so yeah, good thing I checked. Uh, it's 70 power, physical, 90% accurate. I kind of wish it was more accurate for only having that much power, to be honest, but hey. Um, I don't think I want to use this, though, but I'm pretty sure that Acrobat could learn it. Yes, it can. Would give it a way of dealing with rock types when it otherwise really wouldn't have one, so maybe if you're raising a Crobat of your own, you might want to do that, or really just any flying type in general. Uh, so, this up here. The Lost Tower. This is a dungeon that we could go into right now, but we'll have a much easier time of it if we save it for just a little bit later. So for now, let's head into Salacion Town. Yeah, it was seriously that close. Yahoo! Hey, Emil, I got something cool. I'll show you as a special favor. Huh, what the? What's this all about? I got some seals, but I forgot to put them on. Oh, right, it's because I was at the ruins. The ruins here are cool, you have to check it out. Uh, I found a, even have found a hidden machine, it was Defog. Anyway, I'll battle you another time. See ya! Well, I'm definitely thankful that he's not battling us right away, and I have no idea what the crap these berry plants are, so I'm not even gonna guess. Uh... Actually, no, I will guess. Uh... Pomeg? No, Persim! Okay, that is a new berry that heals confusion. Hold item that'll do that automatically. Or, of course, you can just use it. Got a net... Okay, how is this a Nana Berry? A Nana Berry is like a banana. Those berries are very clearly round. It's not what a banana tree looks like by any means. I know that it's in-universe and everything, but I do not buy for a second that those are Nanabs. I could buy them being like Lumberries or something, but hey. Figgy Berries. I think that lowers a stat, if I'm not mistaken. I'm starting to sound like a snake with how much stretching out my asses. Uh, yes. Uh, oh wait, no, it. Okay, 
No, it restores HP when your health is low automatically, but it may make the user confused. This is one of those odd berries that you don't really see used all that often. It's like the kind that they would throw away on the SSN. I need to go to the store for anything, I don't think. I might as well check to see if the clerk on the left's got anything, because they always will have some interesting stuff whenever you get to a new town. Let's see. Uh, netball, nest ball, you can, whoa, okay, so we can buy dusk balls now. That is very worth our time to do so. Like I said, back in Orberg, these are stronger than anything we have seen up to this point if used at nighttime or in a cave, whereas they are just normal Pokeball during daylight. So we definitely want that. It is really, really good. Love Dusk Balls so much. They're so good in filling in your Pokedex. Your encounters with Pokemon can be considered your shared history. Here's a Pokechap called Pokemon History. You use it to see history of your Pokemon catches. So we got a new Pokechap, and this one, I don't really understand the usefulness of. We scroll through our uh, apps right here. You can see that, there it is. It shows us our most recently obtained Pokemon, so yeah. Oddly enough, the bottom right is the most recent and the top left is the least frequent? I, or at least, for, at least recent. It's weird, I don't really get why they arranged it that way. You can tap on the Pokemon to hear their cries. I mean, if you got a cool one like Spiritomb. You can just hear it again and again and again. Shame that Gothitelle's not in this game, because that'd be really fun. I'm too little, so I don't know how to battle very good. Battle very well, excuse you. So uh, she says that the daycare lady is raising Pokemon for her. After much talk of this throughout our adventure, we can finally visit the Pokemon daycare. This is essentially the breeding mechanic in Pokemon. If you leave a Pokemon here, they will get one experience point per step that you walk. They will also automatically get new moves overriding their old ones. So can be a little bit risky. If you put two Pokemon in the daycare that are compatible in breeding, you will be able to, well, get Pokemon eggs out of this like we've seen before. Eggs will inherit the species of the mother as well as moves from the father. When I say moves, I mean moves the Pokemon is legally to get as well as some exclusive ones known as egg moves. Um, there is a lot that I could go over dealing with this, but it would just take too long. I will say though, that if you wanted to raise an Eevee for your team, and you were sad that you were gonna miss out on those moves that the evolutions get at level 15, if you were to breed yourself an Eevee, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Only warning is that in Diamond, Pearl, Platinum onward, baby Pokemon start off at level one and not level five like they did in previous games. So just realize you're gonna have the experience share on it for a little while if you wanna raise it up. Go here, uh, Pokemon News Press, pro Pokemon catcher. Well, I'm not exactly catching a lot of Pokemon, but we'll, we'll humor them nonetheless, because this is actually a pretty good mechanic here. Saw the notes inside, hiring string, yes, K, that's the Pokedex right here. Blah, 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 blah. Onyx. Uh, okay, I, oh, heart scale and some Pokeballs, okay. Normally, I wouldn't go so far out of my way to show this, but because this is a mechanic that can get you some useful items, I figure I might as well go and catch an Onyx and just see what I get for it real quick. Of course, I'll do it off screen. Also, yes, this is seriously the scroll speed of the Pokedex. It's only when you hold it down for that long does it actually move at a reasonable speed. Even dumber than that is just like the menus, if you just roll this Pokeball, it actually goes really fast when you can't do that with the D-pad. I don't get it either. This is just bad menu design, I'm sorry. I like Sinnoh a lot and I think it's underrated, but these menus are just, what were they thinking? Oh, it was number 34 and I scrolled right past it. I am an idiot box today. Let's take a look at its area. Uh, wow. Guess I'm heading back to Orberg Mine then. Be thankful I'm cutting this out. I figured that while we were in the neighborhood, we might as well go to Jubilife City and head to the Poke Edge Company. Since we were asked to come back here after earning three gym badges, let's see what we can get. Hi hi, I'm the president of the Poke Edge Company. Hi hi, your patience is rewarded. Hi hi, I've developed another Poke Edge app. We get the marking app. Oh. And uh, let's see, uh, is there anything else? Uh, are you gonna tell me how long it'll be before the next one? Uh, ready when I get five badges, okay. The marking map is the only new one that we have on this visit then. So basically it's just that you take these markers and you can place them over areas of the Sinnoh region if there's some detail that you want to remember for later. I kind of would have preferred being able to write on it personally, but that's just me. Um, you can imagine that there are secret hidden islands and parts of the ocean with interesting shapes if you want to do that, but eh, that would never happen, right? 
while we were here in Jubilife, I decided to play the lottery, and much to my surprise, Acrobat won! Uh, I don't know exactly what no, Last two digits! Peepee! -pee well, my luck certainly turned around from earlier! There it is! Remember that Onyx was made a lot more common in the, uh, Orberg Mines. And also remember, uh, actually this is a terrible Pokemon to be fighting that Onyx, but there's no doubt I'll one-shot it. Uh, Drapidius, do your stuff! You're just getting a lot of times in the sun here today. Or, I guess we're technically in a cave right now, so I guess not. Uh, also remember that Onyx is a lot faster than you think it is. I wouldn't be terribly surprised if it was faster than at least something on my team here. I guess I'll do Headbutt. Okay, now Drapidius is faster, but yeah. Um, 70 base speed, not something to mess around with early game, or mid game for that matter. Uh, I don't want to use one of my Dusk Balls. I think I'll just go for a regular old Pokeball. I'm not using this on my team. I'm just catching it for the media. Man, Onyx, you're going to have a very sad existence if that is your purpose in life. He refused to give in to the tabloids. Trying this one more time. Wow. Heal Ball? It's not like I'll use this at any point in my journey ever again. One. Two. Okay, fine. Maybe pink isn't your color. Okay, Onyx, you've earned it. Your new home will be in a Dusk Ball. I hope this makes you happy, but I don't want to keep wasting regular Pokeballs on you or anything else like that. Let's just catch you and be done with it. There you go. Apparently that was what she wanted. She got her wish. I guess we might as well look at this Pokedex entry while it's here. Burrows through the ground at a speed of 50 miles per hour while feeding on large boulders. That's really creepy, actually, when you think about how fast the thing can come out of the ground at you. Well, the walk back to Silesian Town would be a really long trek, or a really long bike ride in my case, but you know what? I caught myself a Curlia, and I could... I'll step outside and then use it. Okay, now we will use this teleport, and I will show off how awesome my curly- Right, you can't use it in a town, you have to be in a route. Be right back once again. I will show how awesome my Curlia is, Damn it! We will go back to Silesian Town in an instant with this thing! Wait, uh <laughs> I healed at the Orberg Pokemon's- <laughs> Sorry, Curlia. I thought I was going to be all cool and flaunt you all over the place, but I guess I'll just bike back to Silesian Town in shame. I guess there's a bit of a silver lining in all this, because Curlia couldn't flaunt its teleporting abilities. It grew to level 26 on the way back. We are back. After many a delay, and we have the Onyx that you asked for. Just take it. Oh, oh, oh! That's Onyx. Thanks. Let me get a closer look. I'm sure this won't end badly releasing something that's 27 feet long indoors, but sure, take a close look there. So he's gonna write an article about this Onyx, and he's gonna give us a reward. We get repeat balls. This it makes it more easy to catch Pokemon you've already caught. It can be good if you want to get a specific nature or something like that. And we also get a heart scale, of course. You can come back here once a day, and he will give you various items for doing this for him. He'll just simply ask you to catch a Pokemon that is in the Sinodex, and yeah, pretty nice. Let's see if there's anything on the TV. Uh, good evening, everyone. Keeping up the battles. Um, I, I guess I should mention that. Um, another mechanic of mixing records uh, that I've been meaning to talk about is that you'll get TV programs from other people's save data, so we might see what some of the other trainers that we've met in multiplayer um, have been up to. Let's see here. None other than the uh, Kells. Oh, the in uh, the inestimable Kells. Okay, let's see. Did Kells catch? Why none of the mighty fine Cricket <laughs> Uh Nice one, Kells. That's one slick takedown. Your Pokemon was now with the expertly thrown Pokeball. And of the one thrown, it was the very last one. <laughs> Lame joking aside. Wow, okay, they acknowledge it. We're talking we're talking to one great trainer in Kells. Oh, hang on a second, we got a hot new update. Just been told that Kells nicknamed the Cock Kirkatot. The nickname is Viola. Yow, Kells! You're one last word you're the last word in cool. You're so cool, you're absolute zero. That sounds kind of bad. Go out and emulate Kells. Um, sure, I will catch a Krikatod in her memory someday. <laughs> I will raise it. I think she actually just did that for the throwaway Pokemon in that battle, but still, <laughs> it was kind of funny. Uh, so, that's, uh, most of the buildings in Silesian Town, but there's a bit of a surrounding area to the town that I want to show off. 
Barry was talking about there being ruins around here, and I say we do a little bit of investigating. What do you say? Howdy, traveling trainer. There's nothing here. Well, nothing but plenty of time to think, anyway. Oh, right, we have the ruins here. Why not take a tour through that? That sounds like a great idea, right after we check and see what's in this house. I... Sorry, I think there's just a lot of good stuff in Salacion Town. Um, right here, you're just getting a little bit of lore. Um, no one has ever actually seen a Pokemon lay an egg, so it's never been proven that Pokemon actually reproduce through eggs. It is a little bit loose to call it breeding like I did, but I, I think it gets the point across. We go down here, we got somebody who's in a very inconvenient home location. I can't really imagine they get much traffic. Uh, Pokemon is a brave nature. Okay, just tell her. He, she's just telling me about how this works. Big Pokemon ranches around these parts. Okay, so nothing really good here. I know that one of these two houses is something good, and of course it's the second one that I go to. The other house, I decided to save us a little bit of time on this. You really want to come here? You can customize Pokeballs by affixing seals on them. Oh, you didn't have a seal case? Well, here you go. We now have the ability to make custom Pokeball animations. So she'll give us some seals right there. So we need to go to the PC in order to do this. Um, just put the capsule on the Pokeball after you've done that. So basically, yeah, you're going into the PC, you're sticking some seals onto a capsule, and then you're sticking your Pokeball in that capsule, so that way you're just setting the animations that you have made to the Pokemon. So what we want to do is, we're gonna go to our PC. Also, I haven't acknowledged yet that Bebe's PC is no longer called someone's PC since we met her. Go to Ball Capsules, and now that we have a seal case and some seals, we can now edit these slots and we can make some custom Pokeball animations. Uh, you just drag them over using the touch screen. Uh, wherever you drag them over onto the capsule relates to where it will appear in the animation when it plays out. So by putting, um, let's say a blue star over here and a gold star up there, uh, we can see the animation here. Yeah, that's what it would look like on Curly. It just ex uses the first Pokemon in your party as the example. I decided that for now, I just gave some ball capsules to Curlia and Supernova. We'll see what those are a little bit later, but it's just kind of a nice way to add a little bit of flair and personality to your team. You might want to play with the natures that your Pokemon have, play off of that, maybe give them their own characters, and just give them animations in that way. Big Mushroom, we can sell it in Pokemart. Um, these also appear in multiplayer, so it's something that you can have a lot of fun with. There were plenty of times where I would just make really goofy animations for my Pokemon coming out, and I would get some laughs out of my friends with them. It was a good time. There we have a PP up that'll make it so that you can raise the max PP of a move. It's interesting it goes by a percentage so for instance a 5 pp move you would only get one additional pp out of it but if it were say like a 40 pp move you'd get a lot um i don't know the exact number so i was kind of stalling there i think it is actually one fifth though so yeah it would be 48 i guess is what you would get out of the new total anyway getting off topic over here are those ruins that we heard so much about and by so much i mean a cowgirl and barry mentioning them in passing so salacion ruins it's a little bit of a puzzle here we are seeing in a language top right Lower left, top right, top left, top left, lower left. You're gonna wanna remember that and go in those pathways that it was just spelling out for us. If you go other ways, however, you are able to get some evolutionary stones. I believe this is the first time that we're able to get certain evolutionary stones outside the underground. I'm wanting to say that we've already found a fire stone, but I am certain that we have not obtained every single stone that you can get here. So there's a lot of useful items. Just even though it tells you which rooms you want to go into to get through this place, I'd recommend that you go into every single room possible through trial and error, check the stones that you see there, and just see what items you can find, because there is good stuff. However, there's also some very not good stuff. There is a single new encounter that you are able to find in Salacion Ruins, and it totally sucks! That Pokemon is unknown. In pretty much every piece of Pokemon related media that is not the video games, Unknown is always portrayed as being this mega powerful legendary Pokemon of incredible destruction, and I don't know why. Unknown is arguably the worst of all Pokemon in existence. No stat over 72, it never evolves so that never gets better, and it only ever learns one move, Hidden Power. For those that don't know, Hidden Power is a move that is different for every individual Pokemon that is taught it. It's based on individual values, so it can be any power between 30 and 70, and ironically, with it being listed as a normal type move in the in-game menus, it can be any type except normal. In fact, if you want to know why Unknown is such a spectacular fail in this game in particular, the fact that it can only learn Hidden Power, which is now always special thanks to the physical special split, it can never use its 72 attack stat no matter what anymore. 
That's a leftover from back when hidden power could be physical. So, yeah, that's a spectacular fail if I ever saw one. Now, even though Unknown, I think, is the worst Pokemon we've seen so far, even worse than male Combi, the reason why I'm making such a big deal out of it and dedicating a lot of time to this in an area where you can only find Unknown is that you do want to come here because Unknown is, believe it or not, important for something. It is the only Pokemon other than Rotom in the Sinnoh decks that you see in no required battle and no trainer will ever have it. You have to see it in the wild to complete your Pokedex. No question about that. In addition, Unknown has 28 different forms, one for each letter of the alphabet, an exclamation mark, and a question mark. Catching all these different forms of Unknown will do something for you later on, so you might want to get a head start on catching as many as you can. Those repeat balls that we got at the uh, Pokemon Press also might aid you in getting a lot of these. On that note, I want to catch this Unknown right here, because I really do dislike myself enough to go out for that 28 Unknown reward. And off screen, thankfully for you guys between episodes, I'm going to be gradually catching more and more unknown until I have collected all the forms. Because I do really want to show what exactly they do when the time comes. How fitting that my first unknown was an unknown E. I just realized that right now that that was the case. <laughs> so add that to my Pokedex. When alone, nothing happens. Uh, however, if there are two or more, an odd power is said to emerge. Nope. If you use them together in double battles, nothing special happens. Don't buy the Pokedex's lies. In a lot of cases, the Pokedex is causing nightmares. In this case, the only nightmare is thinking that Unknown could ever be useful for something and then realizing exactly how bad it really is. So I'm gonna go down here. I think this might, yes, we actually reached the end of it unintentionally. Have this tablet right here. Friendship. All lives touch other lives to create something anew and alive. How very touching. I'm just gonna loot your treasure now. Get a nugget that sells for 5,000 Pokemon dollars. Get HMO5 Defog. This is the replacement for Flash, and it's kind of funny that I actually dislike it more than when Flash was an HM. I mean, I've been wanting them to get rid of Flash for years, and when they finally do, they make it super inconvenient by making it a TM and making a cave in the game require it almost, so you can't see if you can't remember who you taught the TM to or if you overrode it. And then you get Defog in its place, which is really no better or worse. So no, I actually preferred it when Flash was HMO5. Get a Mind Plate for that. That'll raise the power of Psychic-type moves. Two make matter, and three make spirit, shaping the world. And then, an Odd Incense. I think that is related to breeding. Let me make absolutely sure of that before I go spouting that off. And yeah, once again, I'm going to just rotate this Pokeball to scroll down faster. I really don't get why they did that. Is yeah, when you're using a phone or something like that, you totally rotate to go down. Uh, okay, so okay, boost the power of Psychic type moves. Now, so we got two items that effectively do the same thing. Okay, sure, that was totally necessary. I guess for now, I'm just gonna go around the ruins and see what other items I can find because I know for a fact there are a lot of evolutionary stones around here, and I only happen to find one of them. In this room, you can find a Thunderstone. At least you know which eerie shade of blue to look for when you're trying to get this thing. Are you kidding me? I have one of the best defensive types in the game. And not only do I lose to an unknown, but you happen to have one of the only, what, two types in the whole game that Crobat is actually weak to? That's what I get for talking smack about a Pokemon. Found a Water Stone. This really should have been the one in that eerie blue room. Oh! On the way out, if you talk to this guy after getting Defog, uh, he asks if you can loan it to him and he'll make it worth his, worth his while. So he teaches it to his Staravia. Thanks, you're my rescuer. Haha, <laughs> here you go. My thanks is promised. You can get a green shard for that. Can't do anything with that even still, but it's still really nice to have that. And it also feels good to help out a guy. And that is all the Celestion runes I'm gonna make you sit through. I bet you're very thankful that I'm getting those unknown between episodes. I gotta say, I don't think I'm gonna have a very fun time with it, but hey, I knew what I was getting myself into when I signed up for doing everything in this game. Besides, it's not like it was anything that was unknown to me that I was gonna have to do that. <laughs> so we're gonna heal up our team a little bit. And uh, with that, now that we have the hidden machine defog, I wanna backtrack a little bit, because now we'll have a much easier time exploring this place, the Lost Tower. With that, though, we 
basically started the video in Salacion Town, so I'm not gonna act like we got there and that was a big part of the video, because it really wasn't. We got a lot of good items, we explored the Salacion Ruins, we got ourselves a new HM move, and yeah, we talked a lot about the ruins themselves and everything in them. I think we're gonna stop here and next time on Pokemon Platinum. We're gonna take our HM Defog and use it to explore the Lost Tower. See you guys then. Thank you.